This is a video for how to go about creating the tough ISOs number one part. So as you look at this object, you will notice that we have some pyramid type shapes. So we're going to look at making work planes, and we're also going to be looking at using the loft command to finish this part. I want you to know that this part is in metric as well. So our first thing we're going to do is we're going to create this L shape by creating a metric part. So we're going to have a, a line we're going to draw. It's going to be 105 by 75. So let's go to Inventor and let's go to File. Let's go to New, Metric, Millimeter IPT, say Create. Grab my pencil. Let's go to the XY plane. Let's go to our line command. Drag to the right 105. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to go up to the front command. And let's go back and double check and it's 75 tall. So we're going to drag straight up. When I see that perpendicular constraint, I can put it at 75 and hit enter. And I'm going to click on front. And I'm going to go to the left a distance of 15. So go to the left a distance of 15 and hit enter. And also over here on the left hand side, you see where we have 12. So our distance of this line down is going to be 75 minus 12, which is going to be 63. Drag straight down a distance of 63 and hit enter. And I'm going to drag straight over until I hit the Y axis. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag straight down and I'm going to click again. And that allows us to have 105 by 75 by 15 by 63 here. And we're going to say finish sketch. And I'm going to click on my house button. Now I want you to notice that I didn't really get the front view that I wanted when I clicked on the house button. I'm going to click on this corner right here. After moving my view cube around, I'm going to right click and go to set view as home and go to fit to view. I'm going to go back to our L shape and we're going to extrude this back a distance of 80. So we're going to go to extrude, flip my directions, and I'm going to go back a distance of 80 and hit enter. And we have our basic bare bones beginning L shape. The thing we really have to think about right now is creating these kind of pyramid shapes here. The first one we're going to do is look at the one in the back. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw for ourselves a rectangle down here on this kind of top of this bottom L shape part. And you'll note that it's 45 here and 15 here and 105. 105 minus 15 is 90. Minus 45 is 45. So these two lines right here, if I can divide them in two, are both going to be 45 tall. So let's go back to Inventor and click on our pencil and click on this surface. I'm going to click on the word top to kind of zoom here for myself. And we're going to click on rectangle, two point rectangle. And I'm going to click when I snap to this corner right here, I'm going to click. And I'm going to drag over and I'm going to kind of drag along here. And you're going to notice that the 27 is highlighted. I'm going to hit 45 and hit enter. And automatically I have that at 45 and it is snapped from left to right. So it's going to be the distance that we extruded, which was 80. We're going to go to finish sketch. Let's go back to our drawing. We're going to use work planes to drag a work plane down off the top negative 17 because we're going down. So let's go to plane, find this surface, drag straight down, and we're going to put in negative 17 and we're going to hit enter. And you have this plane right here. Now we can go up to our pencil and we can come over and click on this work plane or I can go to the browser bar and just click on work plane one in my browser bar. I'm going to choose to do that. I'm going to click. I get work plane one. I'm going to click on the word top to kind of zoom all here. The other thing we want to do is anywhere out here in your gray area or your white area, you're going to right click and go down to slice graphics. And when you slice graphics, you're going to notice that you've cut the top off of this object right here. You've cut the top straight off. Now what we want to do is we want to project every edge that we cut. So we can click up here. You might have project geometry right here. Go down to project cut edges. And you'll notice that this will now highlight in yellow across the top. Let's flip this thing around so I'm looking straight down again. So this now, every single line that we cut is now highlighted in yellow. Yellow lines mean existing geometry. We need to draw this line, that's um, this rectangle that is 60, but it's going to start at the center point. So we're going to divide 60 by 2 and put in 30. We're going to go 30 by 15 by 60. So we're going to come back up here and go to the line command. Find your green dot, which means the midpoint, and we're going to click. You're going to go to the right 30, down 15, over, oh dang, hit undo. Must have clicked on the wrong thing. Drag straight down. So come over to the point right here, just straight down, distance of 15 over 60. I'm going to snap to this line right here. Snap. Snap to this point again. Come right over. Snap again. The main thing is when we hit finish sketch, you'll notice that we have this sketch that is 30 by 15 by 60. Going back to the drawing, you can see where we have this right here. Now we're going to use the loft command. We're going to come up to loft and right in here it's going to basically be asking us for sections. When I come out here, I'm going to click on just the edge. See how it's highlighted in red? I'm going to click, and it's automatically going to see that surface that we created. 
I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to click on the edge of our object here. Now it sees two surfaces because we projected these cut edges and we drew this. We want to click inside the one that we drew and say OK. And you'll notice now we've been able to create that surface that's angled on both sides. If I go to a side view, you can see that it's angled in here. If I look straight down, you can kind of see that angle there. You can really see the angle from the side view. We've morphed one shape into another shape. Let's go to our browser bar and right click on work plane one and go to visibility. So we've created this part. What we need to do for the next part is we need to do the, we can click on the same work plane because you'll notice that this from the bottom up is 58. 75 minus 58 is 17, which is the exact same distance we used for the other work plane. We do need to, however, um, we would, however, normally need to draw for ourselves a rectangle here. But since we did a surface over here, it will see this surface when we go to loft the next time. We're going to go ahead and create this rectangle inside the object. We're going to have some location dimensions to do. So we are going to go to our pencil and we're going to come back over here to work plane one. We don't have to turn on the visibility. Note that it's there. We just don't have, we just aren't able to see it normally in our graphics window. Go ahead and click on work plane one and go to two point rectangle. And we want to click anywhere inside the object and just draw for ourselves a two point rectangle. When I go back to the object, from the left in is a distance of 10, and from the other side a distance of 10 is. So I'm going to come up to dimension. From here to here is a distance of 10. Same thing on the opposite side, from here to here. Distance of 10, but I'm not going to use, um, I'm not going to use my, my keyboard. I can come over here and tap on 10, or what I can do is go to this arrow right here, and it's going to show me the most recent dimensions that I've placed. That will always be there. So if you're only dealing with like four numbers, you can click this little arrow and it'll show you dimensions. We're going to come over here and just tap on the 10 for now, and we'll go ahead and hit our check mark. Let's go back to the drawing. The distance from the front in is 18, and the height of the actual rectangle is 15. So we got 18 and we have 15. Dimension from here to here is 18. Click on this line. 15. Enter. We now, have, we now have shown the distance of this line by the distance we've put in from the sides. This whole shape is determined by its relationship to existing geometry. If I tried to dimension this, it would say it's already um, been created because, you know, 70 minus 10 minus 10, or 80, excuse me, minus 10 minus 10 is going to be 60. Easy enough. Let's go to finish sketch. And we're going to go to loft. If I can move my mouse around right, you can notice how it's going to start to see this surface. I need the green surface to light up. So there's the green surface. I'm going to click once that surface shows up. Then I'm going to come up here to the top to our rectangle. And notice that it automatically selected this surface because there was no other surface we had projected or made. We're going to go to OK. And we now have kind of two of the same thing, except for this one isn't up against a back wall. So when I look at my side view, you can kind of see these two pyramids that we've created. Our next thing that we want to do is we want to draw a rectangle in here that's going to cut straight down through here a distance of 30. The distance in on those rectangle sides is going to be 15. It's 10 in from the side, and then it's going to be 15 this way. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on our pencil. We're going to click on our top surface right here. And we want to grab a hold of two-point rectangle. And we want to snap it back here to the back. We're going to snap along this line and draw a rectangle and just go ahead and have it come outside the object. We're going to go right back into our drawing. It's 15 in from the sides on one side, 15 in on the other side. So I'm going to go to dimension and I'm going to click on this line and this line. And I'm going to drag straight down. I'm going to put in 15 and hit enter. Same thing on the opposite side from here to here. Click and drag down. I'm going to come over and tap on this 15 and hit enter. The neat thing about that, remember it says function. If I right click and say OK, if I was to change this to, I don't know, 11, notice that the other side would automatically move with it. If this is always going to be symmetrical, we can just change one number and everything's going to move. Let's go to finish sketch. Let's go back to our drawing. Cut down a distance of 30. Extrude. Cut. Distance. 30. And hit enter. And right there is the object. Notice the cut down 30 we did right there. They're going to say the distance from here to here is 30 as well. Go right back to Inventor. You have just finished creating the object. So note that we started out with um, an additive dimension. And we went additive twice, but we did additive with the loft command, morphing one shape into another. And then we did some, some, some subtractive with some extrude cutting. So this has been a video on how to create tough ISOs number one.